Wizard, front running, let's talk about it. Hey Wizard, in this video, we're gonna talk about front running. Not only am I going to show you myself running an actual Ethereum full node and listening to the transactions on it, but I'm gonna take you through the theory in a very basic animated way to begin with. So this is really front running as I know it, the very basics right from the start. Now there are different types of front running strategies you can run, many in fact, some of which could be the sandwich strategy or the batch overflow strategy, gas price pumping, prioritized mining and so on. But we are gonna talk about sandwich trading. Now I, as well as many others, probably including you, have been a victim of front running and it starts something like this. Now, once upon a time, there was me and I was browsing social media and I became very excited by this token known as Option Room. I thought this was a fantastic idea. I was really interested in options trading, etc. And I thought, brilliant, I want to buy some of this token. So I went over to Uniswap and offered Uniswap some money. No, actually more money than that in return for some option room. And I thought, no, this is a great idea. But because I knew there would be so much competition, I said, Uniswap, I don't mind a bit of slippage. In fact, I'm so desperate to get into this token because my order won't go through. Here is an additional 20% slippage that I'm willing to accept. Unknown to me, what would happen to me by doing that? In comes Fred. And we'll call him Bot Fred because Fred runs a bot who scans the blockchain and was watching for my transaction. Now, the way that Fred actually could see my transaction was in something called the transaction pool, where there was a whole list of people that were willing to give up their Ethereum for something like Option Room or any token for that matter. And this is what the transaction pool actually looks like. You can go to Etherscan and you can see pending transactions. So these are transactions that have not yet been stamped into the blockchain. They sit in what's called the mempool or the memory pool, and they then get ranked in order of how much gas that they're willing to pay, etc., etc. And we'll talk a bit more about that. Now, whether a miner or a validator is running a full Ethereum node, they will likely by default order transactions based on the amount of gas that folk who send the transaction requests are willing to pay. So that would look something like this. Let's take everyone out of the equation just to simplify things and leave it with just me. And do you remember our friend Fredbot? Well, Fredbot decides to go and pay a whole ton of extra gas so that his transaction in this pending pool of memory would get sent before mine would. And he did so because there's this thing called an automated market maker, which is Uniswap V3. And the way pricing works on something like Uniswap V3 is it works based on how much liquidity of each token is in a certain pool. So if we have Ethereum with Option Room or Ethereum with Pink Elephants and Orange Monkey token, it doesn't really matter. You will have a pool. And based on the supply and demand, that will push the price. So the more of X token I buy, the more expensive X token becomes. And the reason for that is because I'm removing the supply of X token from the pool. Now, conversely, if I go and dump a whole bunch of X token into the pool, the supply of that increases and it increases relative to whatever other token is in that pool, in this case, Ethereum. In other words, when you buy something, the price goes up. You eat into the price. It's similar to working with an order book. If you sell to an order book or you sell with a market order into an order book, you're literally selling into all the bids. So you're pushing the price of that down. Now, Fredbot could see based on the transaction I sent that there was a slippage tolerance. So he could see that he was able to push an order in order to pump up the price and sell it back to me at a higher price. Now he could do that simply by looking at my order and saying, right, I will give you one Ethereum for a thousand of X tokens. So he'll go and push that transaction through. And there's many ways that miners and validators as well can push transactions through or prioritize them or prioritize their own transactions, by the way. So just bear that in mind. Unless you're a miner or validator, it's not a fair playing field. But in this case, Fredbot simply just increased the gas price. Any one of us can go and push a transaction through faster than another transaction simply by increasing the gas price. Now, because the price has changed, but I allowed the price to change, 
I allowed it to move by 20% before my order would go through and thus my order was still accepted. In fact, it was accepted for 1.2 Ethereum for 1000X tokens. So I literally just paid 20% more for the same trade just for the sake of saving on some gas. Now for the back order, what Fred's done is gone and placed another order to close out his position here at that tolerance level. You have Fred over here who bought a thousand of token X for one ETH, or that could have been a thousand option room, etc. Then you have myself who came in and bought a thousand of that token at 1.2 ETH. And by the way, these prices are made up. These were not the option room prices from the actual trade. But here is the final bit. Fredbot then came along and said, yep, I'm going to sell my 1000 token X at 1.2 Ethereum. So he basically sandwiched my order, making a net gain of 20%. And this was all because he could see this transaction pull. Now let's talk a bit more about the transaction pull. So let's have a look here at these open transactions, not yet processed by the blockchain. The first thing I want you to pay attention to is this nonce. Because what Ethereum, for example, allows you to do is to submit multiple of the same transaction. So let's say you send a transaction that hasn't gone through yet and you change your mind. Maybe you want to bid for a higher amount or you want to change something in the transaction. Well, you can submit it with the same nonce and higher gas. And likely what will happen because you're submitting it with higher gas, the likelihood is that transaction with the higher gas will then get put through. Now, this is important to know about the nonce because not only can you change your mind on transactions that you submit before they get stamped into the blockchain, but if you are a miner or a validator and you're trying to get your transactions to go through before someone else's, you can just keep up bidding against other miners in the pool. And this is literally what happens. You have tens of thousands of transactions every day going through where miners and validators are trying to outbid each other for the same transaction. In fact, sometimes they'll even nuke the entire transaction by making it unprofitable to discourage competition. Gas limit is an estimate of how much work is going to have to be done in order to execute that smart contract or how many bytes are gonna to have to be read through, etc., by the Ethereum blockchain. So it's how much work our computer is gonna to have to do and the gas price is how much you're willing to pay for that work. If you don't put a high enough gas price, then there's no real incentive for miners and validators to actually go and prioritize your transaction. Because in reality, if you're trying to beat the front runners, what you really need to do is actually increase your gas price. And yeah, that'll cost you more money, but that's how you deter front runners. And you want to lower your slippage to like 0.2%. You do not want a high slippage. So this is the opposite of what most people do. When there's a new token being launched, most people will FOMO in. They just want to buy it. They want to own it. And so what they'll do is ramp their slippage right up. And these bots are literally looking for that. But now I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, ah, oh, this bot idea, this is a great idea. And this is really where we need to talk about ethics. You see, my philosophy is that front running should be and is illegal in the traditional markets because front running is usually done by an institution who has visibility to transactions that they shouldn't be allowed to act on. That should be classified as market abuse or something. It should be illegal and is illegal. But in blockchain, we all have the same visibility. We all have access to go and see the mempool. But is it really a fair playing field? Well, my mission here is to talk about not only how to front run, but also to show you some behind the scenes and help you on your way to figuring it out. Because my view on this is if everyone has the same access and knowledge, then we have a level playing field. But before I get into this bit, I must urge and warn you that for whatever your reason is for watching this video, front runners are preying on front runners. This forest is indeed dark. So if you've been trying to place your arbitrage trade and it's not been going through for whatever reason or someone else got there first, that's because bots are watching everything all the time, working out the profitability and replacing your address in the transaction with their own, front running you by putting in more gas and getting there before you whilst you've done all the hard work to find the opportunity. With that said, let's talk about some code because you're gonna need some search code to go ahead 
and find these transactions. Here's the code. And so the first thing I wanna do is go and connect to Ethereum and connect to a provider. In this case, I've used localhost because I'm running my own full Ethereum node, which is what I'm gonna show you how to do shortly. But if you're not doing that, then you can connect to Infura or Alchemy or whatever. Just bear in mind that if you go ahead and do that, you are already at a disadvantage. You have a much bigger advantage in running your own full node and you don't have to be a miner and a validator to do that. The next step is to connect to a WebSocket. So I've done the same thing here, but on a slightly different port. Again, if you connect it to Infura or Alchemy or whatever, you will get a WebSocket URL you can enter into here. And then finally, I want to choose Uniswap V3 as the contract address that I want to scan the market for and look out for transactions on. And I also want to go and deconstruct some of the information I find in those transactions. So I need an ERC 20 ABI. So here's that code for that. Next, I want to start my main function and scan using the WebSocket any pending transactions. For each transaction, I want to check that the two of that transaction matches the contract address for Uniswap v3. And I want to get a slice of the data so I can deconstruct it over here and figure out what on earth that user was trying to do. Now, if you're wondering how I knew how to do this and what string to put in here for address, address, uint, address, etc., etc., all I did was look at the actual contract on Etherscan on Uniswap and match all of these different data types into this function that I just showed you. Now that's about all the code that I'm going to run through in this video because this channel is not there to go through each item of code. Again, feel free to go and download it, but I'm going to run it for you live and show it to you actually working shortly. But the first thing that you're probably also going to want is to run your own full node. Now you can do this on your own hardware at home, depending if you have something with a decent CPU and something with decent memory and storage, etc. Or you can just go and run it on AWS like I did in the cloud so that it can run and download while you're sleeping just for playing around and testing. And that's exactly how I did it. This chap over here wrote an excellent blog on how to get started with that. The only difference I made to what they had done is I took this little snippet of code and I replaced it with this snippet of code that allows me to connect to my own HTTP and WebSocket. Here I am on my Ethereum machine. And what I'm going to do is actually just punch in this command and show you the blockchain running. So here is the blockchain running right now on my screen. Now a quick search on Etherscan, you can see that the block is 16441984. And over here we can see 16441984 and counting. So we know that that is working. Another thing you can do here is just go get attach and when I go and do that, I can type in commands. So I can put in something like eth.block number and see the block number. Perfect. I can also put something like tx pool.status and I can see how many pending transactions there are in my transaction pool and how many are queued. It's the pending ones that we're going to care about. Now, just take the GitHub code that I've provided for the wizards over at the Discord and you can copy and paste that into your own terminal wherever you're running your node or just download it like I did. I put mine in a folder here called mem listen. So if I cd into mem listen, then if I say sudo nano main.js, you'll see here is that script. It's downloaded here onto a virtual machine. So this is just like running it on my own local computer, except I'm running it on the same cloud where the blockchain is hosted. Bear in mind, it's connecting to local host. So now all I need to do is go node main.js and that's going to run the script. And already it's found a transaction in the Ethereum blockchain over here. Here is what that transaction looks like decoded. We can see somebody is exchanging sand for wrapped Ethereum. Now, if I was to cancel out of this and go sudo nano main.js to go back into that script, what I can do for you over here is actually just print out the transaction as well so that you can see what that transaction looks like. So let's just go over here and do a quick console.log. And here we're going to console.log the transaction itself and exit out of this. Now let's go and run main.js again. And here we go. Here's a transaction. This is how it actually comes through. This is the transaction hash. There's the from, there's the to, and here's the data. And so what that code is doing is it's taking that data and putting it into a human readable format like such, something like this, 
where I can actually see the breakdown of that transaction over here. So just to make that very clear here where we're decoding the transaction, that is taking that data and making it so that I can actually read what on earth is actually going on over here. So very interesting. Now this is just for the occasional transaction that's calling that exact function on Uniswap. What would happen if I actually wanted to have a look at all transactions? So here I'm gonna go sudo nano main.js. Now just to show you, if I go and actually console.log every single transaction hash that comes through without the whole object, just the transaction hash, say console.log and this would be tx hash as follows and let's go back out of here and go and run main.js and here we are here's all the transactions literally just getting printed out this is every transaction it's finding in the mempool right now and here you can see them speeding up they're just flooding through there's a whole flurry of transactions getting pushed there and so what these bots are doing is they're literally watching these transactions doing exactly what I showed you, right? So they're looking at the transaction, then they're drilling into the transaction, then they're getting the data, etc. But they're starting at this level and peering inside every single one of those, just like our friend from earlier, Fredbot, was peering at the transaction pool from before. In terms of the theory side, I'll put some links in the description of this video. And just to again say thanks to all the members who support Crypto Wizards, Anytime I find something about front running that I think is useful or anytime I develop code that is useful, etc., for traders and for people who know it's difficult in the space, I will go and put it in the GitHub and the Discord so that you can get to that and see that as and when it happens. Until the next one, take care, talk soon.